morning. Um, I'm going to fill you in on the Patrick Reed Survey 2013. For those of you who have not seen it in the past, Rhodes University, funded by Working Water, annually do an aquatic weed survey of all the systems around the country. And what it does, it gives us a very nice quantitative post-release evaluation of all the biocontrol agents we are releasing at sites around the country. It also gives us a good idea of the status of the sites where these aquatic weeds are um, in South Africa. The survey predominantly investigates uh, our five main aquatic weeds, namely water hyacinth, parrot's feather, water lettuce, salvinia and azala, but it's not limited or restricted to these species. So we also go to systems looking for newly introduced species and other species uh, that we are also monitoring. Um, and what the survey does is it provides us with quantitative measurements of the plants, of the agents, that informs us where we need more agents and we can make better management decisions. This is just an example of two sites or a site where we would go to and collect water hyacinth data. You see we take plant parameters as well as insect information. Uh, thus far in 2013 we've surveyed 154 sites. Uh, we haven't got to everywhere yet, but I'm just going to give a few um, positives of the, of the provinces we've been to, as well as uh, some of the failures that we've also found on the survey so far. Additionally, I'd just like to add the, the releases that Rhodes has done at many sites uh, from our mass rearing unit. First up, Eastern Cape, seeing that we're here. Thus far this year, we've visited 10 sites. Um, we have released biocontrol agents at four sites, mainly on Sylvania and Paris Feather, and we've released 1,400 agents at these sites. Uh, just uh, the SWAT Corps in the Eastern Cape, this is in the past has been particularly bad, it's always been infested with water hyacinth and sylvania, but with the great work being done on the system, this year it was nearly completely clean. We found a few isolated sites of uh, a few small sylvania plants and a few uh, water hyacinths, but predominantly the system is very clear. A little closer to us here, this is St. Francis Marine just down the road. Uh, in 2012 we found an uh, infestation of sylvania. We sent them approximately 150 agents, and you can see in 2013 when we went there at the beginning of the year, uh, the dark shape you can see spreading out was from the insect re release, and yesterday we went there and there's already a bit of clear water starting to be found in the system. Unfortunately, the Eastern Cape is all, not all smiles, it's a little dislike. Uh, the Amatola region in the Eastern Cape, uh, the Buffalo River and uh, the Kabusi River, Huge infestation of water hyacinth, very low by biocontrol agents when we went. Uh, Professor Hill has been back later in the year, and some of the agent numbers have increased. There is some um, acridotarsis, and the weevil numbers have increased, but the management on those system was particularly bad this year. KwaZulu Natal, we did the survey. Uh, we visited 57 sites. Uh, we've also been releasing there. We're not competing with Denise. It's just we, we rear agents on parrot's feather. And so we've been releasing Lysakia there, and we have released about 2,400 agents in Natal. Uh, if you haven't seen it, the great work has been done with uh, Duct and the working for the managers on the Osindusi and Mgeni rivers. Really spectacular, massive areas. In the past, it's really been a, a publicity stunt because of the, the canoe marathon. It's, it's received a, a lot of bad publicity, but in the last few years, a lot of good work's been going into it. Um, and the press has caught on to it but it's all been very positive this year. Unfortunately, there were one or two bad sites. This is a site we found out towards Winterton. Massive infestation of water heights and zero bar control agents. Uh, the relevant authorities have been notified and hopefully management is getting done. Uh, the Wall River, Gauteng, Free State, Northern Cape and Northwest. We still need to get to more of those provinces, uh, more areas in those provinces, but we have done some. We've done 50, 15 sites in the Free State. 22 sites along the Vol River. We've also been releasing agents there uh, at two different sites, and we released uh, 2,200 agents in those areas. Uh, Bronco Strait, unfortunately, has some massive infestations of water hyacinth. Um, however, on Warrington Weir, which is in the past a massive infestation of water hyacinth, really high weevil numbers. Uh, there have been a lot of releases, not done by us, but they've done some really good work there. There's still a bit of water hyacinth, but hopefully the insects will be getting onto it. Uh, Azala in the free site is a big thumbs up, still knows. Thus far we haven't found any sites with Azala in the free site. 
These are historical records that we visit every year just to check if the weed was present, and there were none, still none this year. In the Western Cape, we've visited 52 sites. Uh, you can also see we've been doing most of our releases in the Western Cape. Uh, we've released 33,000 insects at 43 different sites. Um, we have a, an agreement with Sassery that we focus more on the Eastern Cape and the Western Cape. That's why our, our figures are a little more skewed to favor the Western Cape. Uh, the East does mainly the top areas. There are some poor areas in the Western Cape, unfortunately. This is around Nysla and around the Crags area. There's a lot of Sylvania in a few ponds around it. These are two particularly bad ones. John Stanwix is there. You can see it's got these big mats of uh, Cypressi floating on top of the Sylvania. And then Rinnendal Bridge. Uh, a lot of insects we've released there year after year after year, but still struggling with getting control of the Sylvania. Stromboli's retirement village, we've we go back there every year, and every year there's been water lettuce. Uh, unfortunately, they were discharging the sewerage into the pond in the middle of the village. They sorted that out this year. They had the water tested, and they were very proud to tell us how clean the water was from the test. And you can see the clear, clear results. And on the survey, we had some of the agronomists that we released while we were there. City of Cape Town gets a big thumbs up. There's been a lot of great work going there, a lot of work, a lot of biocontrol agents, 33,000 agents have released in and around the city. And if you had followed it, I think the Black River was on the carte blanche, really emphasizing the great work that's been going on in Cape Town. What is the importance of these nationwide surveys and these historical data? I think this speaks to this clearly yesterday when he was asking with prioritizing our data or what species we should be working on. This year we've still got lots of water hikes and sites without agents. I think we need to be, if we've got agents, we should be releasing them and focusing them on getting them out to these sites. Also getting all the agents that we have, we need to get all five agents into the sites. And get this data is the date we need to perform to make these decisions that the right things, the right insects are getting to the right basis. Uh, we can also see Azola, 19 sites, the only seven where we actually found Azola and the weevils there really. They are also important because we can find new invasive species and track new species that are coming into the country. Sagittaria platyphylla, finding it all over South Africa thus far this year, 11 sites and counting, we still got a couple, couple bits of the country to go, so maybe that's still going to go up. In the Western Cape, I hear they're having a lot of trouble with this, trying to control it, 13 sites and counting. It also allows us to pick up things that we might not find if we just speak to the implementation officers. Um, with Sylvania Melissa, we've had sites over the years, we just never get control, even though we release it every year. But if you, unless you go there and really try and work out what's happening, you might not pick it up. We're finding with Sylvania, wherever there's a bit of shade, you can see here under the tree, it's still green. Renadol's in a hev heavily invaded area, and we never get control there, so it's always in the shade. Cater Ridge Golf Course, all the Sylvania's dead, except there's a bridge running over, and underneath the bridge, it's all green and alive. So. We suspect from these surveys that shade has something to do with either the insect or the plant and we've got a master's student coming in I think this year to, to try and work out so we can make better decisions, maybe implementation, releasing Sylvania must first control invasives around the dam so we can get better control of the species. Uh, we still got surveys to go this year, we still need to get to the rest of free state, Kauteng and Pumalanga and Mpopo. Uh, secondly, I'd just like to fill you in on the mass area from roads. Uh, we have a mass rent facility where we, we employ three disabled guys and some other um, labor to collect insects. We're really only on aquatic weeds. We try not to compete with Denise, but we work with Denise. Uh, this year we had Southwest Africa come around and we had 250 learners come through our mass rearing facility. We explained to them the concepts of mass rearing as well as invasive species. Uh, we've taken our disabled guys out into the field so they can see where uh, where their good work is getting used and what, what the real benefits of what they do, do is. Unfortunately, um, Collie, the guy in the middle there, passed away in the year from medical condition, which is very sad because he was with us from the, from the initiation of the project. And then releases from roads, we've, had, we've released in five pro uh, provinces at 64 sites and close to 43,000 agents uh, since the last week workshop. I'd just like to thank everyone who helps on the surveys. There'll be a whole lot more once we've finished them all. So everyone who helps uh, visit, 
goes with us out into the field and makes it a lot, a lot easier for us and also the guys involved in the mass room. Thank you.